Okay, cool. Hi, how you doing? And welcome back to the cooking. Today, I thought we would do, and I imagine you've seen the title. We are going to make potato paste. And if you're not an Australian, you'd probably call it mashed potato. And if you've seen the title, you know, we're not going to just make a uh, smooth mashed potato. Because I, I was thinking, right, there's... Hold on. In Australia, we've got like two types of peanut butter. One of them is the correct kind, and the other is the incorrect kind. And I thought I could take that uh, duality of peanut butter and apply it to potatoes to, to see what would happen. So we're going to make the incorrect type of uh, mashed potato today, or crunchy tomato paste as the, as the title of this video suggests. You will need, one, you'll need potatoes. Two, you're gonna need something to cook your potatoes in. See, I have a stove here that doesn't work. Because normally you'd put your pot on the stove and have it boil and let us do its thing. For us, we don't have stoves, so we're gonna have to use oven. We're gonna cut our potatoes into here, fill it up with water and such, and do the boiling process in there. What you're also gonna need is... You're gonna need real chicken stock by everyone's favorite Dragon Ball Z hero, Vegeta. We're gonna use that for the, the water. Now, I'm not sure how glued in you are to mashed potatoes. Normally do it in plain water, but there's a reason why I'm using real chicken stock, and that's because we want flavor. Uh, what we're also gonna need is... What else are we gonna need? Mm. So for the time being, we're just gonna have these two things, and we'll cut all that up. Oops. Make sure you lube things up <coughs> and try not to inhale that because, you know, who knows where this has been. While I'm uh, just cutting up these potatoes, I, I just had a few things to say. The other day, as you might see here, I was uh, trying to get at some coffee. Uh, normally, in the morning, I wake up in a What's it like a zombie-like daze and I shuffle my way towards the coffee because I'm a... I don't know if you've noticed, maybe you're a regular in this channel, maybe you're new to it, but uh, I'm a bit addicted to certain things. And now it just tastes... <sighs> kind of like shit, but... Oh, it's so fucking addictive that I can't stop. I'd beaten one addiction only for it to be supplemented for another more dominant one. I was uh, huffing glue. Uh, behind a chicken treat the other day and I have a lot of vices. When my percolator broke, as you can see, there's no no glass here. I was in between super furious and like babblingly sad. And I didn't know what to do that day. I think I just crawled into a ball and sat under the shower for a little bit. I don't know, I can't remember. It's either that or I just substituted, I don't know, one of my other vices, you know, be it glue or masturbating or whatever it is I did. I did it for a long time and I can't remember what it was, so. But it made me think. Here I am putting my coffee into this thing and drinking it every single day. Sometimes three coffees a day. Is that healthy? Should I be drink like, I don't know. I'm too afraid to research it if it like comes back like, Yes, you are gonna get cancer and die in 15 years, or your kidneys are just gonna like shut down one day and then you're gonna shut down alongside it. But like, yeah, my survival instinct and my like fear of not meeting my uh, vice's needs, it's, it's sort of clashing. And of course I just chose the vice. And lucky enough for me, I was able to Hold on. I was able to find myself another percolator from the local Good Sammies, and this was three bucks. This motherfucker costs 20 bucks from Big W. And in case you're looking to get one of these from Big W, they do not sell them anymore. I went around to like three Big W's looking for like, because this is four cups. I just wanted this, right? Four cups, something around this size. Because as you can see, I can make some, like have a coffee, put it in the fridge, take it out of the fridge and have iced coffee. But the ones I found at Big W, they were like eight cups or one cup. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely addicted to coffee, but I'm not sure if I want to have eight cups of coffee hanging around in my fridge, because this normally lasts three days. Do I want coffee that's like five or six days old? Mm, yeah, I probably don't. So thank you, good Sammies. I appreciate it.
As you can see here, I've left the skin on, and there's a couple of reasons why I did that. One, taking skin off things is tedious, it's boring as fuck. Two, by my understanding, I'm not a nutritionist. In my understanding, there's a lot of nutrients in this skin, and we don't really want to lose that. Because I heard a little uh, factoid, or I read a little factoid, that the human beings, they can live on a diet of mashed potatoes. Apparently, within butter and within milk, you've got, like, what, vitamin D and vitamin A. Like, you've got the vitamins that don't exist in potatoes, just in those other two things. So, like, don't quote me, don't trust me. All I'm saying is I sold snake oil at one point, so, I don't know, maybe don't trust me entirely, but maybe trust me a little bit, who knows. Maybe I was right. So once your potatoes are cut, you're going to take your chicken stock or, hey, you could use any stock. Probably not seafood or beef stock, but any of the good stocks you can probably get away with. So I'll take about, oh, uh, this is pretty hard. So I'll take about a teaspoon of this, maybe a teaspoon and a half. You put it in hot water, you know, to make sure it all mixes up. Here we have the, fuck, what are they called? Pot of potatoes. And we've got the stock in there, I've got the water in there. So what we're gonna do with this is put the lid on. And we'll probably put that in the oven for, I don't know, until your potatoes are soft. As it turned out, you actually had to cook it for about an hour. All right, so as you can see, those are our potatoes. We'll take our knife and we'll take the back of the blade because it's less sharp. And we'll just test the resistance. That looks, you know, that looks pretty good. So that means it's soft enough to mash up. So once your potatoes are cooked, we're gonna get rid of all of the water on the inside. Or well, I guess it's stock, but. And because we are tipping out the water for our mashed potatoes, I recommend don't buy expensive stock, just get cheap, long life stock, because, yeah, you don't really want to throw out good stock. So next, we'll get our masher, we'll mash this up. But what we'll also do at the same time is we will take out some milk, we'll take out some butter, trust me, this is butter. And we're gonna put some into like a little bowl, not like a lot, just enough to make the mashed potatoes nice and creamy. So yep, yeah, just about that much water, about that much butter. So I'll put that in the microwave. Probably put that in there for like a minute or two, like, cause you want the uh, butter to melt. Yeah, that's a decent chunk of butter. So maybe like a minute to two minutes. So once you've mashed your potatoes, once uh, your butter and milk are heated up in the oven, why is this so fucking hot still? You're just gonna mix everything together. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty standard mashed potatoes. You want a decent amount of butter and you want like, the butter's for flavor, the milk's for creaminess. That's why you want them both. So that's what our mash looks like right now. So what we're also gonna do is add some salt, decent amount of salt. And we're also going to add some cracked pepper. Decent amount. That's all I've got left. That's probably plenty. Give that a little, little stir. Now that we've got a soft mashed potatoes, we're going to be looking to make it a crunchy mashed potatoes. So I've got a few things here to make it crunchy, because there's not just like one thing you need. The first thing I thought of was just nuts. Nuts are healthy, nuts are tasty somewhat, and yeah, you just, you'd get the crunchy one and the flavour you'd want, depending on the nut you wanted to put in. But uh, if you're like me, and you don't really like the taste of nuts, because they're kind of... Look, there's nothing wrong with nuts, they're just kind of like... Just kind of crap. And... I just don't really want to deal with them, so I'll just tip them out. There we go. Out of sight, out of mind. There is uh, one more thing. Another way we can make it crunchy is with chips. See? Potato, crunchy potato with potato. And you might notice that these are chicken flavoured chips because we used chicken flavoured stock. 
So we're doubling down on the chicken flavor to make our, what, what's it, crunchy chicken mashed potato. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, this isn't gonna mix with this, because this is, like, all mash, liquidy, and steamy. So when you put this in, at a certain point, it's just gonna, well, it's gonna go soggy. It's not really gonna be the, the crunchy mashed potato we were looking for, so... We can't really use this, which is a bit of a shame. So if I don't like nuts, and if we can't use potato crisps, what the fuck are we supposed to use? There is one thing I thought we can do. We've got a decent amount of mashed potatoes here. What I'm thinking is, is we divide this down the center, and half of it we put into the fridge for later, because we're not gonna make it crunchy within a few minutes. But with the other mashed potato, what I thought we would do is we would put it in the freezer. Because what I wanna do with it is I wanna fry the mashed potato, I wanna segment it, and then fry that in the pan full of oil, and then add, add that fried mashed potato to my regular mashed potato to make it crunchy. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna put half of our mashed potatoes in this ice cream container, and then freeze it. And then maybe I'll have a mashed potato ice cream cone. Who knows what happens in the intermediate period, but once it's frozen, which should be like, I don't know, overnight, who knows when you'll see me next. And we'll take our mash half and we'll put it in the fridge. And then I'll see you when this is all, like, ready to be cooked up again. And now we're back on the cooking sh As you can see, that looks pretty frozen. Not coming out, that's awesome. How yummy does that look? Right, now what we're gonna do with this is, we're just gonna cut them up into portions, assuming I can cut them up. Which I can. Now we'll get the fryer. It's not actually a fryer, we're gonna have to use a frying pan. I, I apologize, and in the future I'll try to be better. So while the pan heats up, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut these a bit more until they're a bit more fine. So they'll be a bit more like nuts or, I don't know, like crunchy clusters or whatever you wanna call them. So while that uh, crunches up, we're gonna take what's already mashed potatoes and we're gonna put it into the microwave to heat up. I don't think we would want cold mashed potatoes and hot crunch, but if you do want to try that, feel free if you want to. So there we go. That's actually pretty hot in my hand. I'm not sure if you can actually see that, but how does that look? What do we, what do we think? Cause I'm gonna put this down cause it's hot. Microwave. So when I thought this up, I didn't really think a, a crunchy, <laughs> crunchy mashed potatoes. That's, that's a bit fucking stupid. But now that I've gone this far, like, come on, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, it, it's pretty hot. So we'll give it a second, but like, if you wanted to add some some nuts to it, or like if you wanted to add some crisps to it, you could you could do that. But like I'm not sure it would actually be any better than this. Like, come on, this this looks pretty good. I mean, it just tastes like mashed potatoes with crunchy mashed potatoes. I'm not finished it even. Look at what I've done here. So as you can see, uh, it it's pretty much the morning and I was going to make my morning coffee, but... You see, now I think I'm just going to go fuck myself and cry in the shower.